Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. So <laughs> here we are. Um, another day, another webinar, as we like to uh, do it, learn a lot. Here's our happy hour from 3.30 to 4.30. Um, and today we have the great fortune of, in, of inviting two people from Let's Talk Science. We have um, Adele, who's from Toronto, who's going to kind of give us a little perspective from um, an educational standpoint. And then we have Joanna, who is, um, Craig, what did you call her? The grand... The Grand Master. The Grand of, Cuba. Uh, that's right. <laughs> of Let's, Let's Talk Science. And she's going to kind of give us a tour and look at the offerings that, yes, you teachers here in Quebec can get um, mostly free of charge. Anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. But um, I think it's a great resource. And uh, we're recording this so that you have an archive of this. And uh, we hope it's useful for you. So I'm going to throw it over first to Adele, and she's going to kind of walk us through some of um, the resources and the um, stuff that happens on Let's Talk Science. So thanks for joining us, Adele. Thanks for the introduction, Chris. I'm going to share my screen. Can, I, can you see my screen? Thank you. Um, okay. Okay. So, well, hello everyone, and thank you for joining our Let's Talk Science session. So, we're very happy to be here with all of you today. Um, as Craig mentioned, uh, sorry, as Chris mentioned, uh, um, my name is Adele Reynolds, and I'm a school board liaison for Let's Talk Science. And um, yes, I live in Toronto, but I am originally from Montreal, so I'm very happy to be present with my fellow Quebecers. Um, and I hope I can make connections um, today. Well, I am making some already, which is awesome. Um, and so I'm presenting today with Joanna Sanders, who is joining us from Regina, Saskatchewan. So Joanna is the director of our professional learning team. Um, so Joanna will present all of our professional learning programming for you, and I will um, present the rest of the programming uh, across the organization for you. And we're here to answer questions uh, after as well, if you have any. Well, I think we did about who's in the room uh, already. <laughs> so um, if anyone wants to chime in on anything else, but um, we are here to present um, offerings for elementary and for high school. Um, so whoever's watching the recording later, hopefully you will see something um, that will grab your attention and you can always do further research later. Just want to plant some seeds of what we have at Let's Talk Science. So before we begin, um, I'd just like to acknowledge that Let's Talk Science is committed to working towards meaningful reconciliation. We believe acknowledging the traditional territory where we work and live is a small but a very important step in this process. It reminds us to learn more about Indigenous peoples in all regions throughout Canada. So in that spirit, I would like to acknowledge that the land on which I work in Toronto, Ontario, is part of the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe, the Mississaugas, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, the Haudenosaunee, and the Huron Wendat. So we encourage each of you to reflect on where you live and work and how we can all contribute to reconciliation. So while at Let's Talk Science, we are committed to equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility. We strive to offer accessible programs, services, and resources that are diverse, address systemic barriers, and lead to equitable, equitable outcomes for our audience. So I'd just like to share a um, short introduction video with you. Education empowers youth to tackle the big stuff and shape our world. Kids want to protect our planet, safeguard our natural resources, and be a part of the climate solution. Let's Talk Science engages with our youth to build problem-solving skills, provides opportunities, seeks solutions, and empowers them to take action. How we educate our kids is how we change our future. Join our mission. Let's Talk Science. So at Let's Talk Science, we recognize that students are living in a fast-paced, changing world of science and technology. So they will need many of the important skills like critical thinking and problem solving and global competencies like communication and collaboration to meet their future careers and also to become responsible global citizens. That is very important to Let's Talk Science. And we also want to help prepare students to respond to global challenges, as we have now seen with COVID-19 and, of course, the threat of climate change. 
So an excellent way for students to develop these critical skills and competencies is through STEM learning. So let's talk science recognizes, oh, sorry, I already said that, excuse me. <laughs> uh, here we go. Okay, so I put our mission on here, but before that, I would like to just say that Let's Talk Science is an award-winning national charitable organization that provides engaging evidence-based STEM programs and resources at no cost to Canadian students and educators. So our mission, as I put here on the slide, our mission is to help children and youth fulfill their potential, prepare for their future careers, and become engaged citizens in a rapidly changing world by supporting their learning and engagement through STEM. And just a quick side note that we just had our 30th anniversary. Uh, so we're very proud of that at the organization, and you can see that we are a long-standing organization. So what makes Let's Talk Science unique? Our offerings are available at no cost to students and educators thanks to our generous donors and funders. Um, Joanna will have a slide to share with you later to give you some examples of that, of who they are. Our offerings are bilingual, English and French. Our programs are available both in person and online. And we offer many curriculum aligned resources as well as cross-curricular. Cross so this is a quick overview of our programming and resources for both students and educators. So I will go over each of these in a little bit more detail in this presentation, but just to give you a snapshot at the beginning, um, we have virtual and in-person events for students. We have projects for students. We have competition series. We have curriculum aligned resources. Um, and we offer support through um, a, an amazing volunteer outreach program, which again, I'll talk about with you a little bit later, um, as well as a robust professional learning program that Joanna will go over with you later. So if you'd like to bring STEM experts into your classroom, you can register for our virtual events and series of events created specifically for different grade ranges. So students will also discover post-secondary pathways and career opportunities in STEM. The first event I'd like to share with you is called STEM Story Time. This is for early years to grade three. Um, so during these events, a Let's Talk Science volunteer will read a story and then lead a simple hands-on activity afterwards that relates to the story. Um, and for all of the events that I'm gonna talk to you about, um, if you can't make a live event, we do offer recordings upon registration. Um, so please do register for our events anyways, and then you will conveniently have an email uh, sent to you um, with the link to the recording. So next we have STEM Club. So this is a live webinar series for grades four to six. They're usually in uh, six week cohorts. So students discover hands-on activities using minimal materials as they introduce, are introduced to STEM concepts. Um, the sessions also include special guests who either study or work in STEM. So this helps uh, provide students with some career ideas. So definitely encourage checking out STEM Club. And for students in grades six to eight, we have Curious Careers. So this is a monthly STEM career exploration series, uh, usually in sets of three, so over three months. So students will learn about STEM career pathways from our panel of industry experts. And the last event that we offer for students are symposiums. So symposiums range for students in grades seven to 12. Uh, generally nine to 12 is a lot for high school in there, but some of them do um, go as low as grade seven. So these are interactive sessions that are offered virtually as well as in person in select locations. So our symposiums connect students with STEM leaders to explore leading edge topics and issues as well as career pathways. I'll just give you an example. Uh, we have some amazing symposiums, and now we all know, I believe, who uh, Jeremy Hansen is. Our Canadian astronaut is now a celebrity, so he has partnered with us several times uh, for our symposiums, so uh, many of us watch these symposiums. So let's going to move on to our projects. So our projects help students develop their problem-solving skills by engaging them in hands-on investigations with real-world examples of local and global challenges. So each project includes ready to use curriculum aligned resources. You'll see that some of our projects are focused on space and others are focused on climate science. Again, um, everything we offer is bilingual. So you will find these projects um, on the French version of our website as well. So the first project I'd like to share is called Tomato Sphere. Um, you may have heard of Tomato Sphere already uh, or implemented it in your classroom. This is our longest standing project of over 20 years now. So this project covers all grades from like early years to grade 12. 
So we partnered with the Canadian Space Agency to create this project. So in this project, students will explore the role of agriculture in space science using tomato seeds that have been sent to space. And yes, they have indeed been sent to space or the majority have, because we've actually seen um, the rocket or ship that has gone up with our tomato seeds. So that's pretty cool. Um, so here's a quick video, um, introduction video for our next project. Hi, I'm David Saint-Jacques. I'm an astronaut with the Canadian Space Agency. During my mission, Let's Talk Science and the Canadian Space Agency are partnering to invite classrooms all over Canada to participate in a new educational project. This is how it'll work. While I'm in space, you'll monitor the environment in your classroom and investigate how environmental factors influence your mental and physical health. Your measurements and data will be fed into a national data set, which you will have access to, so you'll be able to compare with data from other locations across Canada, as well as with my data on the International Space Station. You'll also be asked to look for solutions and make changes to your environment, and then to measure the impact of these changes on your well-being. If you ask me, it's a fantastic opportunity for you to be part of Canada's next space mission. And at the same time, you can work on computational thinking skills and coding. So, want to do science on Earth while I do science in space? Maybe we can even trade notes. Check out the Let's Talk Science website to find out how your classroom can participate. Oh, that was Living Space. Um, so this project is targeted for grades six to nine. Um, and as you saw in the video, we partnered with the Canadian Space Agency for this project as well. The students will compare environmental conditions in our classroom with environmental conditions on the International Space Station. Um, so there are different ways to do this project. Uh, for example, if you'd like to introduce coding, um, there's an option to do that. And we also provide data collection tools for this project. Um, however, they are limited, so you would need to fill out an application, but they did um, restock everything. So there's a good chance that you will get some if you uh, apply. And here's another video. So this video will uh, introduce our first climate science project. Okay, so that was our clothing for climate introduction. So this is for students in grades seven to 12. In this project, students discover the environmental impacts of clothing with a focus on sustainable solutions and also indigenous ways of knowing. Um, so you can also see how this project would be cross-curricular, um, works for science classes, but also geography um, and social studies, and I'm sure others as well, but I just want to point that out. And this is our newest project. So we have, it's called Travel for Climate, uh, just launched for back to school. So we're all very excited about this one. Um, so with the goal of a more sustainable future, students will develop solutions to help reduce emissions in their community by investigating and analyzing transportation data. So um, community is a big, big part of this one, as well as the solution aspect. Um, but yeah, so you can find more information on our website about it, but uh, hopefully you will check this one out if you're uh, grade 10 or high school work. So for students who love the excitement of competitions, we also offer opportunities to participate in fun, interactive, individual or team competitions. So I'll go over that with you. So the Lunar Rover Research Challenge is a unique and fun competition project for students in grades six to nine. So we developed this project in collaboration with Canadensis Aerospace and Avalon Space. So because there will be Canadian rovers on the moon by the end of this decade, 
This project gives students an exciting opportunity to work in teams to win the chance to drive a lunar rover in a mock lunar environment. So the last uh, two times that we uh, did this project, it was so exciting that we did garner media attention for it. So really fun for students. So we also offer competition events like the Let's Talk Science Challenge for grades six to eight. So this challenge is a fun question and answer competition that also includes an optional engineering challenge. So teams all across Canada compete to test their knowledge and STEM-based competencies. This usually starts again in the spring, but just wanted to put that on your radar. So in addition to events, projects, and competitions, we also offer many classroom resources that you can access directly from our website. And we can also further support your students in the classroom with our volunteer outreach program. So for our volunteer outreach program, program you can invite our Less Talk Science volunteers to deliver a workshop in your classroom on your schedule. So our volunteers offer fun and meaningful hands-on STEM activities with students either in person or virtually. And if you're wondering who our amazing volunteers are, so our Let's Talk, Let's Talk Science, we partner with colleges and universities all across Canada. Um, and then we engage and train post-secondary students that are stud studying STEM subject, subjects uh, to deliver STEM workshops to local K-12 classrooms. So the, our volunteers act as role models for students so that students can see themselves in STEM. So for our classroom resources, we offer a vast digital library of curriculum aligned, ready to use resources such as lesson plans, backgrounders, videos, image banks, and more hands-on activities. Um, you can search them on our website. If we have time, um, I can jump over to our website and give you a, show you a little bit about that. And as I mentioned earlier in our mission statement, careers is a very important part of our mission. So you will see careers embedded throughout our programming. Um, but we do also offer direct online access to a vast collection of STEM career resources, such as career profiles, lesson plans, and videos. We have over 600 um, career profiles now. They're all of uh, everyone that we profile, they're all Canadian and the jobs are in Canada far as I'm aware. So just making it very accessible for students. If there's something that they see that they find interesting, they will be able to do that in Canada or have contacts here in Canada. So in terms of videos, um, we have many different videos and a variety of types of videos. Um, but I thought I would share this engaging animated video with you. That's from our That's a Real Job collection. Let's talk code. You've seen the headlines. Data breaches. Stolen identities. Rigged elections. Entire cities taken hostage. Cybersecurity is the next great security threat for governments and companies around the world. But you don't have to wear the black hat. White hat hackers are hired by companies to hack their systems first. Find the holes. Protect them against attack and defeat the bad guys. Ethical hacker? Yes, that's a real job. Let's talk science. I think we can all agree we need more ethical hackers. <laughs> okay, so that's actually it for. Um, big picture programming other than professional learning. Um, that's everything that we have to offer uh, across the board. Um, but I would like to point out here that we have all the programming that I went over with you with, um, you can access it from our all programming page, which is that first uh, QR code there. Um, I can also paste the link into our chat. Um, and we do highly encourage you to stay informed and updated with our latest offerings by subscribing to our Classroom Connection newsletter. Uh, it goes out twice a month. Um, but it will keep you updated with everything that we um, we will show you today um, and give you reminders if there's any deadlines coming up for events and that type of thing. And I can also put that link in our chat as well. So um, I could hop over to the website and show you a few things or we could carry on um, just with the professional learning uh, part. What do you think, Joanna? Um, I think we have a couple minutes if you want to show them uh, the yeah. resources on the website and then I can do professional learning. 
Okay. So I'm going. Okay. So this is our main uh, Let's Talk Science page. So let's talk science.ca. I will point out if you want to look for any resources, it's really, really convenient. We have a French tab here on the top right of our website. Um, so anything that you even perhaps, if you searched it in English first on any one of our pages, you will see uh, the French on the top right on any of these pages. So then you'll it'll just flip you to the, the French version and French projects and events and that type of thing. Um, so what I wanted to show you was the our all programming page. This is new for us. We are all uh, staff at Let's Talk Science. We're excited about it. You can find everything through our tabs up here. But this pro uh, this page, if you click on it, so everything that I went over with you in the same uh, format. So events and series. So that's just the first one you'll see here. So those are all the ones I went over with you. And the nice part is that you can see the grades at a glance. So if you want to like, oh, it'd be great to do a Let's Talk Science event with my students, then at least you can see right away which grades. And then you can click on here to learn more and also to get the registration links. Um, then our projects, those are all here, the ones I went over with you as well. The competition series, those are all here. Um, resources and support. So this is where you can, um, if you would like to have a volunteer um, do workshops in your classroom, so you can do learn more here, just guide you through the, the process and where you're located. And um, you can see if we can get volunteers either virtually or in person in your classrooms on your schedule here. here. Uh, classroom resources. So I'd like to show you quickly the classroom resources and career resources. So if I click on learn more, many teachers will find this very useful. So to find by curriculum, so we have done the work for you. So please take advantage of this. Um, so I'll click here for Quebec grade. I'm just going to randomly pick one. Um, you, you can drill down by course. So oh, there we go. Okay. And then by by topic, but I I'm just gonna click apply here for now. So when I click apply, you will have all of our um, various resources that should link to that curriculum. Um, and then I'm gonna go back for all programming. So for the career resources, you click learn more. Again, you can access these with the tabs as well, but it's on our all programming page. So this is our careers page specific to careers. Like I said, careers is embedded throughout our programming, um, but we also can park here on careers if you want to look for things. So we have all the career profiles here. It says 500, but we're at over 600 now. They just haven't updated the website yet. Um, so you can click on this. It will take you to a whole bunch of different career profiles. Um, stuff inside your STEM career, that's the video, um, events, will be posted here. Um, then we have our lesson plans. Again, more videos. Just lots of things that you can explore here. There's the ethical hacker uh, video that I showed you for that. That's a real job. So that's a very useful page. Um, and at the top here, you can see that there's still like, there's just a lot you can explore. So um, you can take your time and kind of look through this if you find that useful. Um, and let's go back to our old programming. And I think that was kind of the quick tour that I wanted to give you because I know you'll have to take time out on your own to look at this, but I wanted to just kind of show you that. Yeah. And um, this is where you can find professional learning, which Joanna will go over with you now. So thank you for listening. Thanks so much, Adele. Um, I think I unmuted myself. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, so um, at Let's Talk Science, as Adele mentioned, all of our programming is offered at no cost to educators and students, and that includes our professional learning. So there's uh, all of the opportunities I'm about to share with you are offered at no cost. Um, and I'll dive a little bit deeper and explain our format to you uh, as I go through this. So a few years, or I guess a couple years ago, we decided um, at Let's Talk Science to reorganize our professional learning into what we call Let's Talk Science Learning Pathways. And we've added micro-credentials to all of our sessions. Um, and that's because educators were asking for recognition of the time spent 
um, investing in themselves through their professional learning. Our professional learning is not just for educators who are science teachers or technology teachers or math teachers, it's for all teachers. Um, we support all teachers from if you're just trying to figure out how to start bringing some more science into your classroom or technology, or you've been teaching chemistry and biology for years, um, we have something for you. Um, so just mentioning that so you can kind of look, look at this through that perspective. Don't feel just because you're not the senior science teacher in your school that this isn't for you. Um, actually, a lot of our professional learning is here to support educators in becoming more confident um, and excited to teach science and bring hands-on learning, inquiry-based learning to their students, um, leveraging a lot of the resources that Adele just spoke about. Um, and in recognizing the times well spent by educators investing in themselves in their professional learning, all of the opportunities we provide come with a micro credential that, um, that is organized into learning pathways. So let's just spend a moment looking at what are learning pathways um, and um, why we have decided to go that route at Let's Talk Science. Our world is rapidly changing. Innovation continues to drive our society and the demand for people who can fill science, technology, engineering and math related jobs is continuing to increase. Canadian youth need to be curious and capable of challenging the status quo in order to succeed. Let's Talk Science recognizes the important role educators play in supporting and inspiring our youth. That is why we're here to support you on your ongoing professional learning journey. Through learning pathways, educators of all levels can participate in a professional learning journey that builds towards certification in STEM-based concepts. Here's how it works. Through the learning pathways, you will navigate multiple steps and choices along your journey to achieve milestones that result in being awarded the Let's Talk Science STEM Certified Educator Badge upon completion. These pathways will be tracked using a micro-credentialing tool called Badger, easily accessible within our new professional learning sidekick, Canvas. The learning pathways are a mix of required and optional professional learning experiences through various modes of delivery, including live and self-paced. Learning is modeled in an engage, practice, reflect cycle and scaffolded in a format that will meet your individual learning and development goals. A learning pathway is a variety of learning options linked in a structure for learners to progress through three levels, investing, developing, and innovating. Regardless of the level of pathways that you choose to pursue, rest assured that by the end of your journey, you will feel confident incorporating trusted STEM learning strategies, skills, and educational resources into your teaching practice. Visit letstalkscience.ca to start your professional learning journey with us today. Um, so let me dive a little bit deeper into that video. I know it was a little quick, um, but I'm just going to explain some of the different areas that we offer professional learning in and that our professional learning pathways are organized into. Um, so at Let's Talk Science, we recognize there's a lot of different areas of focus educators need to be confident in, in order to support the needs of their students. And so we've organized our learning pathways into four areas of focus. STEM cross-curricular really lends itself to help educators bring STEM learning into all of their subject areas um, by introducing literacy, by bringing in uh, sustainable development goals and other areas. Um, and really support educators in thinking about STEM through all subject areas. I myself am a former French immersion teacher that used to teach all the social sciences and science for grades four to 12 students and would often combine those two areas together to help create relevance for my students so they weren't learning about concepts in isolation, but they could see where they would be applied or where they were being used in the world. It really helped open their perspectives in that. So Cross-curricular is one of our most popular areas of professional learning. Um, STEM-focused learning dives deeper into the four areas of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, those are looking at some of the different applied areas, bringing in a lot of our um, different resources that were highlighted earlier um, on our website and gives you an opportunity to dive deeper um, within those four areas. So there's a sub-pathway for each of those and a badge that's awarded um, after completing a couple of steps in each one. Our globally connected learning helps bring lo learning together for students and their educators by providing opportunities to support educators to see how they can learn alongside their students, how they can bring in different perspectives into their classrooms and help support, support all learners in their classroom. 
Um, it helps bring different awareness um, to different topics um, for educators and make it easier for them to bring that into their classrooms. I know a lot is being asked of educators to bring everything into classrooms and tie it all up and make sure students can make most sense of it. And then this is um, a way to help bring in different learning strategies to help support all learners, all backgrounds, um, and different ways of knowing into the classroom. And so we offer um, three different sub pathways within our, our worldviews um, and globally connected learning um, to help support educators with that. The last er uh, area of focus is called technology enhanced learning, and that's using technology to help solve problems. And so we focus on Technology, not for the sake of technology, but using technology skills. So learning those skills that you learn by using technology, but leveraging them to solve problems um, by exploring pedagogy in different ways that you bring in technology and then also digital literacy. So understanding um, different things like currently the big topic is misinformation that everybody is hearing about. So bringing in some of those critical thinking skills and really looking at that. So those are our four areas of focus. You do not have to sign up for all of Learning Pathways. You can get your toe wet with just taking one session and deciding if it's for you. Um, but as you complete different sessions, they do eventually uh, result in STEM certification and is really popular with our educators. How we deliver our professional learning is to help meet the diverse needs of educators and the time that they can commit to themselves and their teaching practice. So we offer um, both virtual online um, or in person, synchronous and asynchronous. I think everyone's becoming familiar with those terms. And then we also offer a different opportunity called co-learning broadcasts, where you get to learn alongside your students through live broadcasts. So you get to do professional learning alongside your students. So modeling those learning strategies um, for you. So I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into these four modes of delivery by talking about some of our different formats. So the first format I'm gonna talk about is Educators that just want that, you know, quick 30 minute uh, opportunity to learn a couple of new things, some new resources, maybe a new learning strategy, and then take it and apply it and use it the next day. You maybe want to attend in your pajamas or you, you don't want to have to um, invest too much time, just a quick learning opportunity. Those are called lightning learnings for us, um, and they're usually offered in the form of webinars. Uh, we do those a couple times a month on Wednesdays, and they're offered at no cost nationally on our website. You can sign up and, and take part in those. Um, our collaborative learning sessions are also, both these are actually offered online or in person. So they're formats that are pretty um, universal that way. Our collaborative learnings are usually offered um, during you know half day um, professional learning days or other opportunities where you wanna spend a bit more time collaborating and talking with colleagues. We do offer some of those virtually online, typically on Saturdays, because they're a little bit more of an investment, but they're also something that a school board or a group of teachers could sign up for and we would offer to a group. Those ones are more um, uh, collaborative in nature, so we invite educators to come on camera, discuss lots of things, reflect on their practice, those, those kinds of opportunities, and dive a little bit deeper into the concepts involved. Um, so those are our synchronous options, so those are the ones that are offered live in person or online. We also offer um, self-paced options. Um, so if you prefer to take um, a shorter course, um, most of them are about an hour in length. We have a number of courses you can take online. Um, you just sign up for a free account on our learning management system, and then you can self-enroll in any of our courses and you have up to the end of the school year to complete them. Um, we also offer those lightning learning sessions that I was talking about. We have a number of those available online as well and available through our catalog. I'll uh, give you a little tour of the catalog in a moment uh, once I just get through um, a little bit of an overview. And then our last mode of delivery is our co-learning broadcasts. These have been an offering for us since uh, for almost five years now. Um, we offer them in partnership through the Ministry of Education in Saskatchewan and we go right into classrooms and we film a lesson um, with one of our facilitators modeling learning for teachers. We invite teachers to attend alongside their students and they're designed that way so that you would watch the professional learning opportunity with your students and participate with them. And then we provide materials before and after the broadcast so that teachers know what they signed up for and then also offer them opportunity to extend learning for the, their students and themselves afterwards. Um, they're super popular. We have uh, thousands of teachers sign up for them every year. And then we also have well over 75,000 students last year participating in live STEM. 
Um, we offer them in English and French, and they're mainly offered to our kindergarten to grade nine audience, um, but they're they're really popular and they're available for sign up on our uh, website as well. I'll show you that in a moment. Our sessions are facilitated uh, not by myself or not just by myself and my colleagues who are former educators. So we design and deliver sessions made by educators for educators, but we do that also in collaboration with who we call teacher leaders. And these are classroom educators from across Canada who bring their stories, their expertise. They've used our resources, they've used these strategies in their classroom. So they bring that expertise and experience into our sessions and uh, deliver the sessions for us. So they're our main facilitators. So they're a classroom educator that finished teaching for the day and then they'll come online and do one of our lightning learnings or facilitate a collaborative learning session with us. And they also uh, mostly uh, animate our uh, live STEM as well. Um, these educators are located from across Canada, so they bring a diverse perspective of experience. Um, and so if you're a school board that would love to have a teacher leader as part of your board and you know someone or you're a teacher yourself that would be excited to be a teacher leader, I'll show you on our website where you can sign up. And we have typically a, an annual intake, sometimes biannual intake, um, and we'd love to grow our teacher leader network um, if that's something you would be interested in doing is becoming one of our facilitators. How you register for our professional learning is you go to our professional learning uh, page on the website that Adele was showing you earlier. I'll go there in a moment, um, but you can explore all of our live events. Again, there's no cost to sign up and participate. Um, we have a number of live events that take place uh, throughout the year. Um, our bi-monthly uh, webinars, which are lightning learnings. We have some collaborative sessions. We have our live STEM, and we also have something called coffee and a keynote, which we do about every other month. It's a casual learning opportunity on a Saturday morning. We bring in a bigger keynote speaker. At the end of September, we have Science Sam coming in to talk about social media and how that can apply to you and your students. Um, we bring in other topics as well. And we've gotten really great feedback from educators who love to kind of come uh, enjoy their coffee Saturday morning before the weekend gears up, spend a, an hour investing in themselves, and then uh, learn some new things that they can use potentially next week or next month in their classroom. Our professional learning is really popular with educators across Canada. Since its launch in 2021, we've issued over 8,000 professional learning micro-credentials. To earn a micro-credential with us, you attend your session and then you go online, sign up for a little course that supports it with the resources to do a self-reflection, and then you're issued a micro-learning credential to recognize the, the uh, investment in yourself that you made through doing our professional learning. So let me take a moment here to go to our website. And I put this here so that I would pause and do that. So just a moment. So um, I should have known to go to the all programming page and go from there. But I'm going to go from the top here, which is our professional learning page. Um, it's also the same thing that you would have seen if you go to the all programming page that Adele was showing you. And you can see here um, what we have to offer. Again, if you're a school board consultant or a principal, or you have a group of teachers that want to take either a virtual or in-person session, we have a booking guide uh, linked here that offers all of our sessions um, in it. We're just about to launch a big update with a whole bunch of new stuff, but you're welcome to go and check it out today if you're really excited, and then come back for more updates later. Um, we have a link to our live STEM broadcast here. So it outlines the um, format a little bit more for you and shows you what is coming up this fall. And then this is the page I would invite you to go to. It's our learning pathways. I'll go there in a moment. We also have a link to our live events if you wanna see what webinars are coming up, um, otherwise known as lightning learnings or other opportunities. And then if you're interested in learning more about our teacher leader program, uh, you can go there. So I'm just gonna go to our learning pathways page. And on this page, there's a little video that we just watched together. There's a little bit more information about how it works. And there's a link to a course to help get you started. Um, I strongly encourage you if you decide I would like to become STEM certified or I want to take some of these micro credentials more than one to take the course that explains how it works and supports you in your learning journey there. Um, but I'm going to just take a moment to um, if you just want to peek in or you just want to go and take one course and test it out before you sign up for um, for Learning Pathways, I invite you to go to our catalog. So if you click on this link, it'll take you to our educator catalog where you can explore our courses in English and French. And we offer 
everything we do in English and French. So if you happen to take a course in English, but then you happen to teach that subject in French and you're like, oh, I wish I had this in French. There's actually a link in each course that says, want to take this in French and you click on it and it'll take you to the French version of the course. You can self-enroll in that and then you can have access to that one as well. Um, I know as a French immersion educator, I always found that super valuable because sometimes you would take something in English and you're like, oh, if only I had that in French. Well, here we've tried to help solve that problem for you. So depending on um, what you're you're trying to do or what was most helpful to you, I'm just giving you that as a friendly tip. Um, so if you open up our catalog, um, you can see we have a lot of different things. There's that course I was talking about that'll support you in your learning pathways journey. Um, we also have Inspiration Corner, which is the uh, recordings of all of the keynotes that we have offered. So that's a good one to sign up for if you just like to get inspired and sit back and relax. Um, and then we have our two foundational courses. And then these are everything else we have currently uh, live. We're adding more courses every month um, and more opportunities. So we encourage you um, to keep looking. As you can see, we could load more for a while. Um, when you click on one of these, and I just realized I'm logged in, so that won't help you very much, but what I'm going to do is open it in an incognito window, so hopefully you can still see this window. I just wanted to be able to show you what it looks like. So you will have you can see here that you have to log in or register, um, so that means that free account you have to create. There's a couple steps, and then you'll need to come back to the listing to enroll, but once you create an account, th that's the worst part. Apologies in advance for having to... Uh, to do that after that, you only have to log back in and you can sign up for as many courses as you want. Um, you can see a quick overview of what the course is, and then you can click on a course syllabus to get a little bit more detail before you commit. Again, you can always sign up and come back later. Um, so, th so that's um, just a, a quick overview of what hopefully your experience is a good one. Uh, we appreciate you signing up and taking our courses. Um, with that, I think that's, um, I, again, there's a lot of topics uh, to explore on here. So I really encourage you to check it out. There's hopefully something here to meet your needs regardless of what you teach. So um, I'm gonna leave that there. I'm just gonna come back to my presentation here for a moment. So I just wanna take a moment to thank um, our generous donors who make all of professional learning and all of programming at Let's Talk Science possible, Amgen Canada, the Government of Canada, Hibernian, Harbunia Management and Development Company Limited, the Mitchell and Catherine Barron Family Foundation, Rio Tinto, and the Trottier Family Foundation, as well as our numerous professional learning supporters that help make sure we can offer this at no cost to you and your students. Uh, we invite you to stay connected. Um, I know Adele was going to share her email address in the chat as well, but if you are interested in booking a professional learning session and you don't know where to start or you have questions, please send us an email. I'll put that in the chat as well. Um, we also are always publishing things on our social media. So if you haven't yet signed up for our newsletter, you can always follow us on your social media channel of choice, and there'll be new opportunities presented to you there. Um, with that, we're happy to answer any questions or dive deeper into any part of the, the website or help out as, um, as best we can. We're, we're happy to help. That was great. Well. There's so much to explore. Um, I had one question, uh, Joanna, for the coffee and the keynotes. I love that idea. Do you record those sessions? Like, could people go back and listen to ones that have been recorded over time? Yes. Yeah. So if you um, sign up and you can't uh, attend live, we record them and offer them on demand through our Inspiration Corner, um, which is, I think, the second or third course in our catalog. Um, and if you sign up and you can't attend, you also receive an email afterwards with a link to that course. Um, but that's where we post all of our recordings. Some of our keynotes are um, okay letting us leave it there indefinitely. Others only let us leave it there for a few months. Um, and then we also have links to podcasts that we record with our keynotes afterwards, which is something I was going to mention and I forgot. Um, so that's a new offering that we started doing last year. Um, we do a follow-up conversation with our um, keynote presenters and we have a podcast page where we have podcasts available um, to go a little bit deeper into what they talked about. Um, my favorite part of that is it's hosted by um, a, a professor of the Faculty of Education at the University of Regina, as well as a science teacher. So they really dive deeper into trying to make whatever the keynote speaker was talking about relevant to educators um, because they bring that perspective in. Um, so. Well, 
And is the career resources that you were showing as well, um, are those all only careers that are kind of evolving around the science, tech, engineering, math careers? For the most part, what I love about that area is it really helps broaden your perspective about what is a STEM career. I'm surprised all the time when I go and look there. Um, I know as an educator, I often would say, oh, if you're interested in science, here's the top science jobs that I knew of growing up or would know. But what it actually does is help provide um, a broad perspective of what um, jobs there are available. So that there's a big um, database of educator, or sorry, educator, of career profiles there um, that are written in kid-friendly language. So students can go and read them and, and hear about what it was like that inspired people to go, like what was their journey? Um, and that's one of the things I really appreciated. I wish it was something that I'd had when I was in the classroom teaching because that I think one of the challenges for students is not knowing about, I don't know what career I wanna do. And <laughs> you can kind of explore a little bit about you know where uh, these people, what they were doing when they were in middle or high school and um, what kind of inspired them to pursue the career they're in. Yeah, and there's jobs great. I had no idea were related to STEM in there. Yeah. Well, it's yeah, a thing not with... just astronauts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> trying to change the, la the lab coat thing. stereotype. It's a yeah, definitely. Try, try to change that because there's so many jobs that are linked to STEM without, as you want to mention, not really Absolutely. realizing it. So trying to put those out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, new new jobs come up every, you know, handful of months, right? So it's... Exactly. It's great to stay in touch. Yeah, and I think that that would be awesome too to broaden, like you were saying, Joanna, broaden students' horizons of what the possibilities, um, so they all don't just become YouTube influencers. Or exactly. <laughs> yeah. You could become talk. a YouTube influencer, but maybe you want to be a YouTube science misinformation buster. Or <laughs> there you go. There you go. Awesome. Awesome. Anybody else have any questions? It's, I mean, it's really impressive, your catalog. Um, and I'm going to start talking and sharing out much more of it. Mm -hmm. It's really impressive. Um, the yeah. PD options are phenomenal. Um, and I, I love the connection to the UN Sustainable Development Goals too, right? So you, even if you want to step away from STEM, it, it's all like climate change and there's so many connections to make. So really cool. Thank you. Yeah, we try yeah, and have really something relevant. for everybody. So yeah. hopefully everyone can right. see themselves in there. Yeah, we've talked about saying, let's talk science and more. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> A lot more than, than the name. Yeah, let's talk science plus. plus yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything has to have a plus on it now. <laughs> um, your learning pathways. So when teachers take, you know, their self-guided PD, what's the time link? around each you know those capsules that you have um are um, they all relatively the same uh, length of commitment yeah so each of our four areas of focus have three pathways within it um and uh, each of those is depending on what you choose to do or how in-depth you go some people would like to really dive deep and spend a lot of time self-reflecting um but they're about two to three hours commitment total um per area so um there's some teachers that have gone through in the summer and, and gone through what we had released. We have Tech Enhanced coming out later this year. Um, but it's yeah anywhere from, for the whole level one, probably about 12 hours by the time you're done. So depending on what you choose to do. We also have, it, it, it does dive a little bit into some different grade areas. So if you really wanted to focus on grades one to six, or you wanted to focus more on uh, the secondary level or something like that. There are some choices to make and then there are some courses that are more K to 12 general where you can make some choices within it or it'll present different options. So I'm um, trying to recognize different grade levels and needs for teachers too. That's really great. Cool. Well, I um, wanna thank you too, um, Adele, Joanna from Let's Top Science. This has been a, a great session, great intro and um, we'll be sharing this out. And if you're watching this and you know a science teacher, it's like, I don't know what to do in science, send them this video and they will have tons of resources at their fingertips. So um, this is a, not a one-shot deal. This is a continuum for not only your kids' development, but for also the teacher's development as well. So thank you guys. Thank you so thank much you. for the invitation. Nice to meet all of you. Thanks, Chris. Yeah.
Thanks for having us. Everybody. Thank you. That's great. Take care. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. Bye. -bye.